In today's video, we will be talking about World War II facts you didn't know, inspired by our viewers. 1. The biggest mutiny was on USS Hornet. The USS Hornet was part of the famous Battle of Midway. While Waldron's attack on a Japanese aircraft carrier is widely known, the flight to nowhere that happened along with it isn't. It was a disaster in which the Hornet's air group had fallen apart. The torpedo planes, fighters, and bombers had all abandoned their commanding officer who returned alone. In fact, almost every plane on board USS Hornet disobeyed direct orders. Nobody is completely sure why this mutiny occurred, but based on individual testimonies, it seems that there were too many egos in the room. No squadron leader could agree with one another about the best way to attack a Japanese aircraft carrier. By the time the Admiral had commanded planes to set off, there was so much confusion about what positions they would take that it ended up being a flight to nowhere. Because of this refusal to follow orders, John C. Waldron and his squadron perished. We only have one official report from the Hornet, which was written by Pete Mischer. The report did not correlate with eyewitness accounts of the other surviving pilots. This information was brushed under the carpet so as not to bring down the victory in Midway. 2. U.S. population increase due to better health care Battlefield medicine improved throughout World War II. At the beginning of the war, the only substitute for the loss of blood was plasma. But by 1945, serum albumin had been developed. Serum albumin is whole blood rich in red blood cells that carry oxygen and is more effective than using plasma alone. Also in this war, air excavation of the wounded became available. In addition, surgery techniques like the removal of dead tissue resulted in fewer amputations. Penicillin or streptomycin was administered for the first time in large-scale combat to treat bacterial infections. Service members with combat fatigue which was later known to be post-traumatic stress disorder, were given a safe place to stay with plenty of food and rest. This led to about 90% of patients recovering fast enough to return to battle. Malaria was a serious threat in the tropical islands of the Pacific service members. They were given adabrine, which is a group of medications used to protect against malaria before going into war. They were also inoculated with vaccinations for tetanus, smallpox, yellow fever, typhoid, cholera, typhus, and bubonic plague. Due to these improvements and others, the survival rate for the wounded and ill increased to 50% during World War II from only 4% during World War I. 3. The best air ace was a Soviet pilot, Ivan Kozhidub. Ivan Nikitovich Kozhidub, a Soviet World War II fighter ace, was credited with over 62 victories. He was the highest scoring Soviet and Allied fighter pilot of World War II and is one of the few pilots known to have shot down a Messerschmitt Me-262 jet. His first combat mission was on an LA-5 fighter on the 26th of March, 1943. His plane was badly damaged by a pair of Messerschmitt Bf-109s, but he was able to land his fighter. Although he wasn't injured, his plane was finished. Kozadub was regarded as the best Soviet flying ace of the war and was attributed with the highest number of air combat victories of any Soviet pilot during World War II. He was said to have a natural gift for deflection shooting. He was made a hero of the Soviet Union on three different occasions, the 4th of February 1944, the 19th of August 1944, and the 18th of August 1945. He remained in the military even after the war, and during Soviet operations in the Korean War, he commanded the 324th Fighter Air Division. In 1985, he retired as the Marshal of Aviation. 4. Story of the Wooden Bomb During World War II, there was an act known as Operation Fortitude, which was a hoax made to throw off the German so they would leave the real targets unprotected. This operation consisted of fake bases, tanks, and armies all made of wood and cloth. This was to make the enemy think that there were more forces than they thought. This operation was carried out to subtract German troops from the landing in Normandy, and it worked for a while. Over time, the Germans realized it was all deception and decided to copy the strategy. They began to build fake wooden airfields with wooden aircraft, hangars, and vehicles. However, these creations were not as real as expected, so the Allies easily realized and did not fall into their trap. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and give this video a like if you are enjoying the content. Five. More U.S. servicemen died in the Air Corps than Marine Corps. 
The air war was a continuous event from early 1942 and lasted through the end of the war. Much of that involved deep prohibiting efforts by masses of unprotected B-17 and B-24 bombers. If you can shoot down one B-17, then you kill or capture a dozen airmen. This was a daily occurrence for them and the chances of any air crew surviving long enough to complete the initial target of 25 missions before they could be rotated stateside were slim. When compared to the Marine Corps, we see that the Marine Corps are amphibious assault troops that only landed on hostile beaches and fought their way through to overwhelm and capture enemy-held territory in the Pacific. The casualties were intense and direct, but relatively brief. Battles might last for a few days and sometimes a week, but then it was over. The troops were then sent back to staging areas to heal, replace lost casualties, and retrain for the next battle. From this, we can see that more U.S. servicemen died in the Air Corps than Marine Corps. 6. Adolf Hitler's nephew served in the U.S. Navy Adolf Hitler's nephew, Willy Hitler, served in the U.S. Navy in World War II. During his visit to Germany, he attended a Nazi rally with his father, and during his visit to another country, he met the Nazi leader in person. He wrote a series of articles about Hitler, who was unhappy about this and demanded that Willy retract them. Willie got fired from his job in England when Hitler became Chancellor of Germany in 1933 due to his relationship with his uncle. He traveled to Germany and he found his hostile uncle who denied they were relatives, so he once again returned to England. As the war began, Willie tried to join the British Army, but he was refused because he had a bad relationship with the Nazi leader. In 1939, he immigrated to the United States with his mother. Five years later, he was able to join the U.S. Navy after he wrote to President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who instructed the FBI to conduct a thorough background check. Willie Hitler served as a pharmacist mate in the U.S. Navy for three years and was awarded a Purple Heart. He received a shrapnel wound in the leg and was rewarded for his bravery in the field. 7. The U.S. would have entered the war without Pearl Harbor On July 26, 1941, President Roosevelt issued a presidential order to the Philippines calling into service all military personnel to be commanded by an American general. This was done because he knew that Japan would soon attack the Philippines as they made their way through China and the Pacific. It was a foregone conclusion that the Philippines was next on Japan's invasion list. None other than General Douglas MacArthur was the general assigned to defending the Philippines. This presidential order was issued three months before the Pearl Harbor attacks, which everyone believed was the reason why America entered the war.